Welcome to those who are joining us online this week for worship. Don't forget to use the QR code so you can register yourself and anyone who else is watching with you. That way we know you're with us in spirit, if not in person. And as as always, we welcome you back uh, here as soon as possible. We look forward to seeing you uh, ASAP. Uh, with that being said, the uh, basis of today's sermon is our Romans 5 text as we continue our Romans sermon series, but also uh, includes the Old Testament and our New Testament text, which is Jesus sending the 12 uh, disciples. So keep that in mind. Also, if you can, try to think back a couple uh, weeks ago to the Great Commission sermon that Pastor Joe gave and and think about uh, what he he uh, had to say, because I think I do know an okay job at, at, at least of, of wrapping that in. And so keep in mind also our, our great commission to uh, make disciples of all nations and, and that in light of our ministry pillars and basically all that we do here at St. Stephen. So with that being said, we will prepare our hearts and minds for worship. make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read responsibly Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, 
and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. And hear the good news of our loving Heavenly Father, for he indeed has had mercy upon us and has sent his Son, Jesus, to die for us. So in the stead and by the command of my Savior, Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Old Testament reading for the third Sunday after Pentecost is from Exodus chapter 19. The people of Israel set out from Rephidim and came into the wilderness of Sinai, and they encamped in the wilderness. There Israel encamped before the mountain, while Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the people of Israel, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. So Mo Moses came and called the elders of the people and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. All the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 5. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though for perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. 
But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. For sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through the one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And he called to him his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. The names of the twelve apostles are these. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon, the Cananean, Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them, Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And proclaim as you go, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. You received without paying, give without pay. Acquire no gold or silver, nor copper for your belts, no bag for your journey, no, nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor a staff, for the laborer deserves his food. And whatever town or village you enter, find out who is worthy in it, and stay there until you depart. As you enter the house, greet it, and if the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And if anyone will not receive you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet when you leave that house or town. Truly I say to you, it will be more bearable for on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than for that town. Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you over to the courts and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake, to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. When they deliver you over, do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise be to
holy name of Jesus, amen. The basis of my sermon today is all three readings, but especially these words from our Romans text. For while we were still weak, Christ died for the ungodly. Thus far my sermon. When we dive, or rather, when you dive into the book of Romans and begin to read it, not just once, but over and over and over again, you begin to see how the book of Romans Romans itself is both simplistic and complex all at the same time. If we want to look at it simplistically, in the first four chapters, St. Paul deals with and talks about the righteousness of God and the righteousness of God which is given to you. You can remember what I had mentioned in my sermon two weeks ago, the righteousness of God is something that demands, that he demands of us, just as he says, be holy as I, the Lord your God, am holy. And that what God commands of you, he gives also to you as a free gift in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Last week, Pastor Joe mentioned one of the heroes of Scripture, Abraham. And in, cha- and in chapter 4, we learn that the heroes, that he was a hero of the faith, and we are heroes of the faith, not because of what we do, but because we share the same faith as Abraham. Those who trust in the Lord, their faith will be counted as righteousness. This gets, gets us to the next section in Romans next few chapters where Paul, St. Paul talks about the hope we have as a result of having God's righteousness. These next four chapters, St. Paul tells his readers and the listeners what life in and through our Lord looks like. If you want to simplify the Christian life, it's governed by two realities, or as I like to put it, Two kinds of righteousness. The righteousness that you have with God, according not to your own works, but according to God by His grace. God the Father has declared you, the listener of today's sermon, righteous by grace through faith on the account of the life, death, and resurrection and ascension of your Lord Jesus And you have done nothing that would merit this gift or even contribute to it even a little bit. Nothing you do will count toward your righteousness. Not you doing the right thing. Not you coming to church today or listening to church online this week. Not you volunteering to help with VBS. Not you selling all that you have and giving to the poor. No. Because at the right time, while you were still, what, St. Paul writes, while you were still weak, Christ died for the ungodly. While we were still, what, sinners. While you were still a sinner, Christ died for you and he died for me. The ungodly aren't people who just make a small mistake once in a while or here or there. I've gotten to know a lot of the people here at St. Stephen during my time as the vicar, and I know a lot of you here at St. Stephen on a first-name basis. But the truth is that I know all of you better than you might think I do. Not because I spend endless hours Facebook stalking or something like that online, no. But I know you better than you think might think I do because of what Scripture reveals who you are. Simply put, the Scripture reveals that you are a sinner. What does that mean? That out of your heart flows anger, jealousy, lust, greed, lies, short-temperedness, an innate ability to fail on your word. And I could go on and on. But I really doubt there, my point being, I really doubt there is anything that you could do that would honestly shock or surprise me, and I'll speak on behalf of Pastor too, there really isn't anything that would shock or surprise Pastor and Joe, Joe and I 
to the point where we could no longer say that I am going to pronounce Christ's forgiveness to you or that we no longer want to see you here in the seat on Sunday morning. Last time I checked, you are a sinner. And sinners aren't just people who make small mistakes here and there, but they are people who desperately need a Savior. And just as death came in through one man, much more has the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. Whereas by one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, as St. Paul writes. So by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. And because of that, God now calls you. And he calls you and numbers you among the saints. In our Exodus reading today, we hear that the Lord speaks to his people through Moses saying, You shall be my treasured people among all the people or treasured possession, excuse me. You shall be my treasured possession among all the peoples, for all the earth is mine, says the Lord, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Through the righteousness of God, or rather through that righteousness that God gives to you, you become a member of the royal priesthood of all believers, as Martin Luther puts it. This gets us to the second reality of the Christian life, what I like to call the horizontal righteousness. It is the righteousness that is found in our relationship with our neighbors. Because while our work counts for 0% of our righteousness in our relationship with God, we are still 100% accountable for doing the right thing, for making the right decisions, because it is God who holds us account accountable. What are we to do with this new freedom in Christ, as St. Paul has told us, we now have? We are to love and care for our neighbors. We are to love and care for their needs. Luther writes, the Christian is the freest of all people, yet is servant to all. What does this mean? That we see the kingdom of God at hand. In our gospel reading this week, Jesus says to the twelve, go and proclaim the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What does it mean that we see the kingdom of God at hand? In our freedom, the Lord sends us back to our responsibilities. The responsibilities we have in the relationships he has given to us. So let's take this moment to look at our new pillars that have come out of the ministry clarity process. The first of the pillars is we are devoted to growing. Christ followers walk by, the reading, by reading the Bible daily because the living word of God shapes everything we think, say, and do. Christ followers commit to daily prayer and devotion individually, together, and in our family units and intentionally through the life-giving ministries of our church and family. Team Jesus is devoted to living. As Christ followers, we understand the freedom of living according to God's perfect plan. While the world promotes serving self, Christ followers live to selflessly serve those the Lord has placed in our lives, including family, co-workers, peers, friends, and those here at St. Stephen. Christ followers are devoted to family. Christ followers embrace God's design of the family, households being the center of faith formation. Christ followers take their faith for formation roles seriously. 
and our church family supports the dedication to a family-focused development of faith, restoring. Christ followers are restored when we gather weekly in worship to be fed and renewed by God's grace-filled grace gifts. Christ followers build relationships and participate in faith formation opportunities as a community through Team Jesus Bible study fellowship events and servant leadership activities, both in the home and here at St. Stephen. And sowing, Christ's followers empower others to know their Savior and what it means to be his disciple by mentoring, teaching, and encouraging no matter our stage or station in life. Christ's followers cultivate the fields in which the Lord has planted us by sowing the word of God and shining the light of Jesus in all we do, praying for those lost in our midst and loving others as Christ has loved us. Those are our new pillars and what it means to be Team Jesus. Having looked at those pillars, the leaders who came up with these pillars through our ministry clarity process didn't come up with them by accident, nor are they revolutionary ideas within the church. Simply put, they remind us of our responsibilities and the responsibilities we, that we have in the relationship that the Lord has given us and what our response is and ought to be to what God has done for us. That is what the Christian life is. A continual response to what God declares he has done for us. I must admit, I wrestled this entire week with how I was going to write the sermon this week. How I was going to use the text. I, look at, I looked at our gospel reading text today and thought I could use it maybe for illustration. But, if I'm being honest, at the beginning of the week, I looked at the gospel text and thought to myself, how am I going to preach the sending of the twelve? How am I going to incorporate that into the sermon? How do our lives fit into the sending of the twelve? Because we certainly aren't apostles. How does this relate to us? We can't raise the dead. We can't cure leprosy. And I don't expect anyone here to go to town to town proclaiming the gospel. But it struck me later this week that so much of this text relates to what we do here at St. Stephen. I mentioned in a previous sermon, the Holy Spirit works in and through us that as we read his word, Things come to us, and we go, aha, both big and small. How does this gospel text relate to us? Well, let's look at verses 5 and 7. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them, Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and proclaim as you go, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at near. Did you catch that? Because that is huge. When trying to understand how does this gospel text relate to us here at St. Stephen. Did you notice who they were to go to first? The lost sheep of Israel. Go first to Jerusalem, then to Judea, then Samaria, and then to the ends of the earth. My point being, one of the many responses we have to what God has done for us is that we are now the sent ones. Well, the Lord sends some, and even some among us, to the ends of the earth. The mission of the church begins with those who are here closest to us to our families first, and then to those who are here at St. Stephen, and then to those who are in our community. If we were to continue looking at our gospel text, you would see that the Lord tells them to acquire no gold or silver or copper, to bring 
not even two tunics, nor sandals, nor staff, and so on. Not because he wanted to make their vicarage experience a miserable one, or not because he wanted to stick it to the twelve while sending them out, but the Lord wished to place nothing in their lives and in their ministry that would stop them from getting to the place where they could say, I am a sinner and you are a sinner in need of forgiveness and without the cross we die. You see, the Lord didn't want anything to block the grace of God coming through. Jesus wants to be known as your Savior, not simply just your counselor or the one who helps you make the right decision, although he does all of that. My point being, if we get the little things right in life, if we get the little things right here at St. Stephen, but we miss the big picture, then what is it really? So what do we put in our lives that would cause us not to see ourselves as the ungodly, redeemed by grace? What do we put in our lives that would cause us not to love and serve both our families and neighbors? Is it our own ambitions in life, our own goals, our own hopes, and our personal dreams? That being said, the Christian life and living in hope and living in the hope that we have in Christ is certainly a struggle. Let me put that, or rather, let me say that again. The Christian life is certainly a struggle. Sometimes we struggle with that, what God, with that, with what God commands of us. On other days, we struggle with the freedom we have in Christ and the obligation that we have to others and to, the, and to those here at St. Stephen. But Jesus gives us the same promise that he gave the twelve as he sent them out. And it's found in the final verses of our Gospel reading today. And that promise is that neither opposition nor your own ambitions, not even your own sin, can undo the Father's care and love that he has for you. And the care and love that he has for those he places in your life. Because despite of everything around you that would point to the fact that you are a sinner, before all of heaven and earth and those under the earth, God the Father has declared you righteous. Not by what you do, but by His grace, through faith. In Jesus' name, Amen. We continue our worship by returning to our Lord a portion of the gifts He has blessed us with and entrusted to us for His kingdom work. We have several giving options for you to utilize. As St. Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, Arrange in advance for the gift you have promised, so that it may be ready as a willing gift, not as an extraction. The point is this, Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has made up his mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all contentment in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. Our announcements this week. Faith Chest Sponsorship. We are looking to provide a wooden faith chest for each child who is baptized here at St. Stephen as part of our Growing Faithful Families ministry. An assembled chest costs $32. Sponsors can choose to write a personal note to the child who will receive their chest. If you have questions, please contact Deaconess Kim. 
Our fifth annual golf tournament in conjunction with the Liberty Women's Clinic will take place on Saturday, August 26th. Early bird registration ends August 18th, so be sure to register your team early and save some money. On July 30th, it'll be Vicar Alex's last Sunday here with us at St. Stephen. Please mark your calendars for a farewell ice cream social taking place between services in the Fellowship Hall that day. Be sure to stop by, get some ice cream, and wish Vicar Alex well on his final year in seminary. And now we'll hear from Kara about our Ministry Clarity Congregational Creative Event. Those are our announcements. Hello, Team Jesus. I'm Kara Schluter, the Communications Team Leader for the Ministry Clarity Process. And I want you to join us on Sunday, July 23rd at noon for conversation and creative brainstorming facilitated by Pastor Mark Frith of LCEF. This all-congregation event is part of the ministry clarity process we have been engaged in this past year. Through our work, the Lord has revealed ministry opportunities for the congregation, which we'll explore during this creative event. This is your opportunity to share in the potential enhancement of current ministries or the development of new ones. Please join us as this process only works with your involvement. The new guiding statement reminds us that we are Team Jesus, joyfully empowering others to be Christ followers. Our time together in this event will raise more ideas about how we can show people what it means to be joyful Team Jesus. Importantly, we must continue to equip and encourage others ourselves to empower others to be Christ followers. In order to plan ministry for the next five years, we need to brainstorm ideas about our neighbors, which will be one of the main focuses of this event. A light lunch will be served to fuel your creative brains. Please RSVP by July 16th for food prep purposes by using this QR code or by contacting the office. At this time, we make confession of our Christian faith to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This week in prayer, we pray for Rick and Shane Strack. We also pray for Janet 
This is a friend of Kathy Ch Shelton who is having who had lymph nodes removed uh, this week and who has been dealing with uh, mouth cancer and the health issues that have stemmed from that. We pray for Terry. Uh, Terry Ullman has asked us to pray for Sheena. This is a friend of a coworker who is diagnosed with cancer. We continue to pray for Preston. This is the grandson of Madonna Miller, who is recovering from a motorcycle motorcycle accident. Uh, we also continue to pray for Nathan. This is the cousin of Veronica Lee. Uh, we also continue to pray for Jerry, the, the uncle of Audrey Lammers, and Audrey herself, who is recovering from surgery. And we also pray for those who are homebound and the shut-ins. So let us pray for the whole, whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, you treasure your people for Christ's sake. Give us your commandments to guide our ways. Grant that we, redeemed by his blood, may do all that he has spoken. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, send forth laborers to make known the gospel of your kingdom in Christ Jesus. Prosper the labor of pastors, missionaries, deaconesses, and old church workers. Be with all those who study for holy ministry, especially Ethan as he prepares for his vicarage. Be with all church workers that many people may hear and believe you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O righteous Father, from whom all fatherhood in heaven and earth is named, give your grace to all fathers and sons of your church. Inspire them by your own example and the example of your beloved Son to be perfectly united in faith, hope, and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, turn the eyes of Joseph, our president, Mike, our governor, and all who make, execute, and judge our laws to you, that they may receive wisdom and strength to faithfully carry out their duties. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, our God, the earth still yields its increase, and under your care and preservation, bless us with daily bread and give us wisdom as stewards of your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son demonstrated his power over sin by healing every disease and affliction. Give healing to those in need, especially Rick, Shane, Janet, Sheena, Preston, Nathan, Jerry, Audrey, and those whom we name in our hearts. Lord, deliver them according to your gracious will and send your spirit upon them and upon, and upon the homebound and the shut-ins, that they would daily be reminded of the hope that we have in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O blessed Lord, through Moses you called a people to yourself, and from them you deliver from them you de delivered up your own Son to be our Savior. By his suffering and death, he has redeemed us sinners from our sins. By his resurrection, he has released us from the fear of death. Help us to live as your people, doing the good works for which we were created, and praying with confidence the petitions and supplications of our heart. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us receive the benediction of our Lord, the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bless us and preserve us. Amen.
Of the path to heaven, offering 